I'd like to tell you about the triangle game. And this game has two levels. Most people are already playing the game on the first level. They just don't know they are. And this first level of the game isn't very fun. I like to call it the Bermuda Triangle game. <laughs> <laughs> because we do tend to get lost in it. Some people get lost in it their whole lives. <laughs> now, according to psychiatrist Stephen Karpman, there are three roles that people uh, unconsciously play when they're in conflict with somebody. And those roles are victim, persecutor, and rescuer. Or as I like to call them, weenie, meanie, and genie. <laughs> Another way to say that is victim, villain, and hero. Think about um, little Nell, oh no, and Smiley Whiplash, you must pay the rent or else. <laughs> and then there's Dudley Do-Right who says, I'll save you little Nell. <laughs> <laughs> now the clues that you are in the the triangle game are your <clears throat> your breath is shallow and you use absolute words like you always or you never and you also your your body posture your position is frozen in the posture of that particular role for instance meanie Weenie. Genie. <laughs> and the object of the game on this first level <coughs> is to win the victim position. Yeah, that's the big prize. It's a race for the victim position. I, it's, I like to think of it, it's like uh, we're arguing our case to a judge. And, Your Honor, I am the victim here. And the other person goes, no, Your Honor, no, I object. I am the victim here. And this can get quite intense. One word of caution. Issues in the triangle may appear larger than they really are. <laughs> so we can get lost in the triangle. But the good news is we can also get found. Well, that brings us to level two. <laughs> now, after we've gotten dizzy from going round and around and around the triangle, then we might want to take a drama mind pill. <laughs> a, a drama mind pill is a little reality pill that we take when we're ready and able to see that maybe this drama is mine. Hmm. Maybe it has something to do with moi, as in my own issues. And then, once we have that realization, that is the key to level two. That is when we have a light bulb moment. <laughs> <laughs> and we start to see that we may be contributing to this drama that keeps happening. And instead of calling in witnesses to corroborate our victimhood, we have a new kind of a witness. And this is our conscious awareness that is watching us and seeing that these are familiar patterns that we're in. Now Einstein has said, no problem can be solved in the same level of consciousness that created it. Mm -hmm. So when we shift into seeing our co-creativity and things that are happening in our life, we shift to a whole new level. Now the objective of uh, the game on level two is to 
ha gain even more awareness and to take more responsibility and to step into greater authenticity. And one of the ways that I've been taught to shift is to play with whatever comes up, to play with whatever role I'm in. Uh, I'll give you a for instance on that. I have a rescuer persona, and I call her Miss Wonderful. Miss Wonderful. Just give her a tiara and a cape, and she will save the day. She will fix you. Do you have a problem? I can fix you. I'm really good. I'm good at fixing people. I'm great. But then after a while, maybe she doesn't feel she's being appreciated. And so the rescuer then becomes the victim or the weenie. And she, this persona I call chopped liver. <laughs> <laughs> because she goes, oh, well, I'm just doing everything for other people, but nobody does anything for me. What am I? Chopped liver? <laughs> Now, a second way to shift is to move your body. And that further, for instance, if, you, if you're in a pattern like a meaning, if you start to move your body in you know, ways that are outside of the meaning position, you start to literally break the holding pattern that's in your body, and it breaks the mindset as well. And you can move like this, or it gets you warmer, too. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> another great way to move that, that I like to do is to dance. It's really fun. And, uh, when I first uh, took the relationship workshop uh, over 10 years ago with uh, Gay and Katie Hendricks, they're the ones who I learned the triangle game from. Uh, that I met my husband Tom there, and Tom and I, during the breaks, they'd play music, and we would dance during the breaks. And just him and I, oftentimes, were just there dancing together, and we would make faces at each other. <laughs> Monkey faces. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really fun, and here we are ten years later, and we still do that, especially when we get stuck in the game. <coughs> And it never fails to shake us out of the position of those roles. The third way is to breathe. As I said earlier, when you're in the triangle, the, a clue is that your breathing is very shallow. So to take some deep, slow breath. I'm going to take one now. And that helps shift us into the present moment. So the next time you find yourself in the triangle or in a conflict, ask yourself, hmm, what role am I in? Meanie? Am I in genie? Or am I in weenie? And just that awareness is wonderful. Congratulations, you have shifted to level two. And there you can play with it. You can move, or you can breathe, or all three. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the way that you win the triangle game. It's also the way you win the game of life. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>